Mr. Jeffrey? All right, you, sir. Yeah, sir. Oh, okay. Others two in there? Okay, we can put that in there. I've seen, sir. We're just going to have to talk to you, okay? Okay. This is the interrogation of Bo Pete Jeffrey, which took place in late 2018. He is there after being accused of taking the life of his wife. Now, I'm going to show you the interrogation. Every now and again, I will chime in with my own thoughts. But before I do so, let me give you some further context. It was around Thanksgiving in 2018 where his wife, Lisa Jeffrey, went missing. Eventually, after tips from her being missing, the police found her body on around December the 3rd, 2018 in an RV, her body was wrapped. That's essentially the context. So let's get into the interrogation. If you do end up liking this video, please subscribe. Hey, this is Lucy. Okay. Hey, how you doing? All right, sir. All right, Detective Lyle, we're with Marion County. Thank you. Do you want to have a seat up here? I can't make it back up there. Like, uh, need a hand or? Uh, I my whole body's just going away. Yeah? Uh, you got it? You got it. Looks like you got it. Ah. There you go. Ah. All right, sir. How are you? So how are you doing today, sir? I see you're uh, having some problems here. Um, let me just get your information right. Make sure I'm speaking to the right person. Okay. What is your first name? Oh. That's B O, right? Yeah. I mean Pete. Pete. Okay. Jeffrey. J-E-F-F-R-E-Y? Yes, sir. Okay, and what is your cell phone number, though? Uh, 904-769-0695. And what is your address? I live at the Travel I Holiday Campground, Highway 40. Okay. What lot number is that? 808. Okay. And um, what what you did at birth? I told you, 30 of 1963. Okay. And uh, let's see here. Now, just a quick observation. As you can see, he's got his hand between his legs. Either he really needs to pee or he's just trying to comfort himself. Sometimes, body language, we can't read too much into it. So I don't want to make more of it. You could say that, you know, when people cross their arms or when they're scratching their face, you could say... This is a sign of nerves, but more often than not, we touch ourselves to comfort ourselves. And I don't mean that in a sus way. So um, let's talk a little bit about your, how long have you lived in, in, in Ocala on the office 40? I've been there about eight months this time. Okay. And what do you do for a living? I do a little driveways. <laughs> and is that what bring you all over, or is that just a local thing? Just down here. What's that? Just down here. Okay. And down here means like what, Florida or? Yeah. Okay. And uh, so do you own your own business, or do you work for somebody else? I just do a little small jobs for myself, me and my sons. Okay. Do you have any employees under you, or is this just like a family thing? No, I don't have any employees. Okay. Um, so, uh, do you go by Bo, or do you go by Pete? Pete. Pete, okay, Pete. Um, so, do you know why you're here? No. Okay. I'd like to uh, talk to you today and get to know you a little bit more. Um, the circumstances are um, rather serious. So I want to make sure that we talk to you and we communicate clearly what we're here for and um, what the situation is that's going on. Um, and as part of that, you came down here to the Putnam County Sheriff's Office today, right? And I, my understanding is you came down here voluntarily? To no, they brought statement? me. Okay. Did you come here on your own free will or did they bring you down here against your will? They brought me. Okay. Did, uh, did, when the deputy brought you down here, did, did you agree to come down here? Okay. Um, so I want to let you know that you're, I'm going to read you your rights, okay? Because I want to talk about, talk about some sensitive things with you. Um, so I'm just going to read them off this card here, okay? You have the right to remain silent, okay? Anything you say can and will be used against you in the court of law. Okay. Right. You have the right to talk to a lawyer and have him present with you while you're being questioned. Yes. If you cannot afford to hire a lawyer, one will be appointed to represent you before any questioning if you wish, okay? Okay. You can decide at any time to execute these rights and not answer any questions or make any statements, okay? 
Do you understand each of these rights as I've explained them to you? Yeah. Oh, you're nodding your head? Yes. Okay. Yes. And having these rights in mind, do you wish to talk to us now? No. Okay. Thank you. All right. So let's talk a little bit about your your sons. Um, I want to get to, little, get to know a little bit more about you and your family. So your sons, are they adults? Yeah. Okay. Oh, they're a grown man. Grown man. Okay. So what? Uh, I, know, I know you have, I think uh, someone has spoken with uh, uh, Bo Jr., um, at this, and how old is Bo? Uh, 30, 30, 32. Okay. And he's got, he's got kids? Uh, he has kids? Yeah. Okay. So you're a grandpa. Yeah, many times over. <laughs> how many kids do you have total? I have four boys and one girl. Okay. And all your kids are probably adults then, right? Okay. And um, so aside from Bo Jr., let's talk about, so you have three other sons besides him. What, what are their names? Uh, Cody, okay. Harry, and Little Eddie. Eddie? Okay. And, your, and what's your daughter's name? Christian. <laughs> Christian? Christian. Christian. Okay. All right. And uh, so in... Uh, You've lived in Ocala for about eight months. Now, where did you live before that? I was up there with uh, Uncle Joe. Uncle Joe? And where does Uncle Joe stay at? He's down here now to get me, but uh, he got a doctor's appointment. Okay. And your uncle, is it your actual Uncle Joe, or do you just call him that? He is. Mama's brother. Mom's brother. Okay. And where, where, so Uncle Joe lives right here in... in Pano County? No, he lives up in Atlanta, but my Mary Jane was uh, here where you all come drop me at. Oh, okay. Uncle Joe and Mary Jane, are they married? Uh-huh. But they're not no more. They've been divorced for 30 years. Okay. Um, and what have you been up to the last couple of days? Just coming down here. Just so you know, Joe, and hope I don't die. Okay, what's going on with you health wise? I'm an alcoholic. Okay. Diabetes. Which one I phone? I think I'm going to the end of my road, so. Okay. So you, you are uh, an alcoholic and you have diabetes. How long have you had diabetes? Since so five. Okay. And uh, any other health concerns we should? I don't know. They said my blood pressure was up uh, down. Okay. Yeah. Is, is high blood pressure something that you normally have? No, they only told me every time I go to a doctor, I've got diabetes. Okay. okay. And I go every two months. Okay. I have to because I'm diabetic and I have to get checked out. Do you get like, uh, does your driveway business, does that give you enough income to get by or do you have another source of income or anything like that? My swing by. Okay. Um, let's talk about your, um, you gonna throw up? <coughs> Did you drink last night? You want some uh, nap? <laughs> Let's give him something. So, so far they're just trying to make him relax, have him calm, have him talk about himself, make him feel important, make him feel special. So he slowly opens up. Him puking, I know, I was disgusted by that, were you? What's the story with um, this woman by the name of Patience? Yeah. Who is that? Um, I bet, well, she's my long cousin, long distance cousin. Okay. She lives in a uh, campground underneath the interstate on call or travel. Okay. Let's talk about her a little bit. So you got, um, my understanding is that you guys are in some kind of a relationship? 
Oh, yeah, I've known her all my life. Okay. My mom and toys. They know me all my life. Has she been staying with you? Yeah, right now. She was staying with me in the past? Yeah. When was the last time she was been staying with you? Kind of take me through that timeline as far as like how long have you been just the day before yesterday. Okay. Let's talk about the day before yesterday then. So we're not talking about, today is um, Tuesday. Yeah. Or are we talking about Sunday? Probably. Okay. Yesterday was Monday, so the day before yesterday would have been Sunday. Let's talk about Sunday. Okay. What happened Sunday? Nothing. Just, she had to go down to Florida to be with somebody. Her mom was sick. They come got her. And she went home. Okay. And did you take her home or did somebody else take her home? Uh, my cousin come got her. Okay. Well, okay, help me understand. Was she staying with you on Sunday originally and then she was dropped off? Yeah. Okay, and who's your cousin? Uh, Jojo Jeffrey. Jojo Jeffrey, okay. And Jojo Jeffrey dropped her off at um, her mom's house? My mom's son come down there. We took her right across the yard and lived right there in the Okay, okay. So your son dropped her off there at her mom's? Or? No. Well, she can only well, she can walk right on into the bridge and get home. Okay. Well, I just live in right the side of 75, and they've only been there for about 40 years. Okay. Was patients with you before then? No. Um, my wife, uh, wife and Okay. And she had to come to the chance me. I hadn't even been able to bring her. It just looks like somebody pulled the plug. <laughs> okay. So let's talk about um, patients coming over because your wife left you. Is that accurate? No, she was saying, well, yeah. Yeah. Okay. When did your wife leave you? November 5th. Okay. Tell me about that. What happened with that? She just got time to move on. Okay. Now, just so we know we're talking about the same person, what's your wife's name? Lisa Jeffrey. Okay. Tell me about Lisa. Tell me everything you can about her. Tell me if I uh, pretend like I don't know anything about her. What kind of person is she? She gives a little sweet heart, and uh, she's sick with colon disease. And uh, we just know each other all of our life. Okay. Have you guys had problems um, with your marriage, or what, what's going on? Why did she leave? Lisa. No, she just, she always would just uh, disappear at night. Uh, I don't know where she went. She would appear during the night? Mm hmm She would appear at night? Disappear right? from my home. Okay. Well, I'd be asleep or something back down. Okay. Um, so what, uh, what kind of things was she into? I mean, she's disappearing at night. What was she doing? A crack. Okay. Crack cocaine? Yes, ma'am. What kind of, uh, aside from the crack cocaine, was there anything else that she was doing? Um, that smoking weed. Okay. What's interesting about this line of questioning right now, the reason why they asked him, what do you think of your wife? is the way he describes her. If he's critical, if he degrades her, if he calls her a bad mother, a bad wife, the police might think, okay, we're going on to a motive, right? But he's saying 
I think he's just being honest by saying that she sneaked out one night, she took drugs as he clearly does. I don't think he's trying to degrade her. I think at this moment, I just think he's being honest. Okay. Let's talk about one week ago. How, right. where have you been? I'm talking about not yesterday, but last Monday, one week ago. Where were you at? One at home. Okay. So talk, take me through uh, last week. Okay. Try to remember every detail you can. Just live every day. <laughs> Laying in bed every day, you said? No. Uh, Laying in bed every day? No, I just got sick last night. So one week ago, you were at the house. Okay. Take me through the week. What, so have you been bedridden or have you been moving around and traveling throughout? Uh, bedridden. Okay. Now, um, let's start with Monday of last week. Uh, so you're, so you're sick. Uh, what, describe your symptoms to me. Are you like the kind of, kind of, you can't get out of bed or? I'm weak. Okay. So you were in Ocala for the last week. Is that accurate? Okay, and you actually came up here yesterday. Is that yeah. accurate? Okay, yeah. I, I misunderstood you. So, okay, so that makes sense. So when's the last time um, you haven't been in contact um, with your, is it your wife or your ex-wife? Lisa. Lisa? Yeah. Her ex-wife. Okay. And when was the last time you've been in contact with her? Over a phone or in person? Yeah. Friday. Hmm? Friday. Okay. This uh, this last Friday. Yeah, the other day of Friday. Okay. Tell me about that. So I don't live no life. I go to work, come home, take care of myself, and go back out. Okay. When you were in contact with her Friday, what happened? Patience. No, I'm talking about Lisa. Oh, I ain't talked to her in a long time. About a month. Okay, that's the November 5th you're talking about? Okay. And the last time you spoke with patients was what day? Day before yesterday. Okay. We might have already covered this, but when did you leave Ocala and come here? That, was, that would have been Monday, yesterday? No. Yeah, Monday, not this Monday, or last Monday. Okay, you just told me that you were in Ocala all week last yeah. week, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, I don't know which Monday it was. Okay. Right. Yesterday, you came up here to yeah. where you're at currently at. Yeah. And one week ago, we talked about how you were in Ocala at your house, correct? Okay. Um, where did Where did you go when you left Monday? First place you stopped last Monday. <sighs> Gosh, I don't remember. I was so sick. Did you go to a, you said earlier that you went to a budget motel? I, I was yesterday down here. Well, did you, tell, you said a little while ago you went like for four or five days or something like that, stayed a week at the budget or no? Just no, 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 no. I just was there last night. Here in Palatka? Yeah. And then you left the motel last night to come to Aunt Mary's? Aunt Mary's, yeah. Okay. I don't have a good memory at all yesterday and the day before. Okay. Well, let's talk about um, more specifically last week. And you, you had said earlier that you were at the house in you know, Ocala, kind of hanging out. Um, when's the last time you've been working? God, it's been a while. Okay. I haven't been able to do that in about three weeks. Okay, so you haven't been working in about three weeks. So you've been at the house, and patience has been checking on you. And this whole time, um, was was Lisa staying at the trailer with you, or where no, was she staying? Her at? mother lives in Maine. Her mother lives in Maine. Okay. Um, does Lisa have any property at the house? I don't know. So it's clear, obviously, there are some drugs affecting him. He's a bit slow in reacting, but I don't know if you noticed. Whenever they ask him about Lisa, he moves his head and he's like, oh, I don't know. She's with her mother. Oh, I don't know. So he's trying to avoid the question. I don't know if ashamed is the right word, but he's just trying to deflect attention. He's trying to ignore it. Okay. So patients would come and visit you and take care of you. 
And Lisa's kind of been out of the picture since November 5th. All right. And um, your daily routine for the last week, uh, would it be accurate to say that you've been kind of around the house and yeah, sick and things of that right nature? Yeah. Okay. Um, when was the last time that you've actually been to your trailer? Uh, I was gone from there all together like a week minded or one minded. I'm sorry, repeat that. I, I left there and minded, not just minded, but the one before. Okay. I'm a little bit confused. I am too, because I don't remember it too good. Okay, so you have been out of the house for over a week now? Away from the house? Yeah. Okay. Because you're kind of tripping over yourself here. I'm trying to help, help understand, understand this. I understand, sir. Okay. So you, you have been away from the house for one week. Okay. And has anyone had access to your house in the last week? No. Okay. Just closed up. Can I ask why? Uh -huh. Can I ask why you haven't been back to your house? Because I've been coming up here and fiddling around and uh, just ain't been able to make it back there. Okay. And when you describe kind of being up here and fiddling around, what does that mean? There's a side scene and my other family here down here in Okay. Yeah. So traveling around and whatnot? A little bit. Okay. And who have you been traveling with? Have you been alone or with somebody else? By myself. Okay. What kind of car uh, have you been driving this week? I have a, a 16 Dodge Ram pickup. Okay. What's in your Dodge Ram pickup right now? The one that you've been driving? Just a little mild of things. Okay. Can you tell me what's inside the truck? Is there a, do you have a uh, cell phone? No, I lost it. That's the reason I had to come here so they know who I am. Okay. What else do you have in your truck right now? Do you have like work stuff or do you have my dad or something? So just in general, what's in there? What's in your truck right now? You could and the inside of the cab, I keep it clean. Okay. <laughs> they brought my bag and that marriage when I was there. Okay, so there's a bag in there. What does your bag contain? My clothes. Okay. Anything else? Tools of the trade or anything like that? There's some shovels and stuff on the back. Okay. Um, we might have already talked about this. I'm just going to make, make sure I have this clarified. Uh, when was the last time you've spoken with patients and been seen her in person? Mm -hmm. I don't remember, no. It had to be one day last week. Okay. Did you go into any stores with her or anything like that? I don't know. I mean, we have been, but not like just or today, you know what I mean? Okay. So over the last week, you have been with patients at time to, from time to time? Yeah. Okay. Was she, how was she getting back and forth to see you? She would walk. She would walk from her mom's house over to you? Uh, I live in a campground on this side, and she lives over there in that one. Right. So she's been kind of coming to your house and seeing you and, and stuff like that, things of that nature. Um, have you been made any recent pawns or anything like that? Been to a pawn shop or anything? Yeah. Okay, tell me about that. I had three rings and I had to pawn them just to get by and to get out of here. Okay. And you looked at your hand there for a second. Were those rings that you normally wear wore on you? No, they'd already been pawned. Okay, were those, were those rings that you sold, were those are rings that belong to you? Yeah. Okay. And who was with you uh, when that happened? I was by myself. You weren't with anybody else? Where did you, uh, where, did, where was that pond made at? Do you remember? One was uh, Jerry's Pond Shop in Ocala. 
Tell me about, uh, tell me more about Lisa. I, I, my understanding is we talked to a lot of people and they said that she's got a lot of problems and that you guys have had a lot of problems. Um, tell me about the history of your marriage and what's been going on. We got married in 12. Okay. And I've been surviving a survey back here in my chin to chin chin, trying to get from where they know me. Because I, I know I'm going to die today. Okay. So when you guys when you guys got married, I mean, uh, where did you guys get married at? Is this... Okay, I'm gonna start. Oh, okay. And um, correct me if I'm wrong. You don't have any kids with Lisa, right? Mm -mm. Okay. Um, so you got married in 2012 in Stark, and tell me about the history of the relationship. Did it? Uh, wh why did you guys get divorced? She started. She was bad on dope, and. Okay. I wouldn't give her nothing no more. She would steal my money and. Okay, tell me more about that. I just did it and she would disappear or steal one of my trucks and roll it around. Okay. I had heard that she, um, or maybe you had told another law enforcement officer that she had taken some money out of your truck. Tell me about that. I had three trucks and I had a lot of pouches. I don't know if I keep on with the sign well. Okay. And for me to order the, to pay all my bills, I had to put a little money in this truck and a little money in that truck. Okay. And she had called her daughter, her daughter called Paris and said, what you doing, mom? And she said, I'm cleaning out the truck. And then I woke up and the pouch was over there. And she was gone. How much money was it? Seven hundred dollars. If you took seven hundred dollars, was that the nice, that was the day? You, did I understand you correctly? That was in November. I mean, I don't I mean the fifth. Is that what you talking about? Yeah. She was gone at that point. Okay. So she took the pouch containing seven hundred dollars yeah. from my back in the beginning of November, November fifth. Okay. And um, has she uh, been if? You haven't heard from her at all since then? Not by the phone or social media or anything? Sorry, she had taken no money and go down to the crack bottom until everything was gone and somebody went out there and kicked her out my door again and I did her back on and as soon as she could move, she would take whatever I had to go to the stuff. Okay. So this is a routine thing for her to go take your money, routine and whatnot. And so you guys got divorced, is my understanding, right? No. Okay. And when was the divorce? I think on the 17th. Like now we get into the knit and grit. They've asked her, okay, so describe your wife. He's mentioned that she stole from him. She was trying to feed her drug addiction. She stole his truck. And everything he has said about her so far as the conversation has gone on has been negative. Earlier, he said, she's a sweetheart. She was okay. Now he's talking about how they got married in 2012. Then they got divorced. She stole from him, etc., etc. So slowly, throughout this whole process, they've broken him down a little bit, bit by bit. And it's been difficult because he doesn't even know what day it is, judging by the look of him. Yeah, it was probably about the first of November, October. Okay. October, November, around then, you said? October, I remember. Okay. You, sure. don't, you don't remember the date of the, the divorce? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, I do. What's the date on, in October? October, November, September. It was in September. Okay. What's the date in September that it was? It comes by on the 17th. Okay. What have you heard about the case that we're investigating? Have you heard anything from anybody? Anybody been telling you anything about what's going on? I don't know. Let's uh let's take a break for a second. Okay. We're just gonna um 
go. I gotta go make a phone call real quick, and then we'll be right back with you, okay? Can you give me some more to lay down? Um, yes, sir. If you want to get comfortable in here, we're not going to stop you. You know, get comfortable. Okay. Just give us a few minutes. Let me just get my... Now, as the interrogation goes on, Jeffrey starts to get a really bad cough, and then they take him away. Uh, paramedics, doctors, whatever they are. Now, I don't know if it's because of this incident, but eventually in the ICU unit of the Putnam Community Medical Center, he admitted to hitting Lisa. During the trial, a medical examiner testified that Lisa Jeffrey died of 26 blunt force injuries. So now I'll take you to the verdict. Versus Bo Pete Jeffrey, case number 2018 CF 4670. Verdict is to count one. We the jury find as follows as to the defendant in this case. The defendant is guilty of first degree murder as charged in the indictment. So say we all dated this 15th day of July 2021.